Geçen seneki kongremizde vasatlığımızla yüzleşleştiğimizde bütün kalkınma en önemli çözüm yolu olarak ortaya çıkmıştı. Bunu dünyada çok iyi başarmış bir ülke olan Finlandiya örneğini ülkemiz açısından dinlemek ve irdelemek istedik. Sağ olsunlar dost ülke Finlandiya'da bu çağrımıza işbirlikçi bir yaklaşım ve büyük bir heyecanla yanıt verdi. Konuyu çok sahiplendiler kendilerine. Karşınızda tekrar teşekkür etmek istiyorum ve bir alkış icra ediyorum. <gülüyor> Sayın Büyükelçimiz aramızda, müsaade ederseniz Finlandiya Büyükelçisi'ni sahneye oturumumuzun açılış konuşmasını yapmak üzere davet ediyorum. Finlandiya Büyükelçisi Sayın Nina Vaskullahti geliyor. Hübe huomenta ya tervetola İstanbul'in. Good morning, Merhaba. I'm very happy to be here today in Istanbul. I'm very honored to be invited to this event. Ladies and gentlemen, dear Istanbul Chamber of Industry members, organizers, thank you for inviting Finland to be your special guest at the 13th uh, uh, Chamber of Industry Congress. There's a lot of talk always whether Finnish and Turkish languages are related. And I've thought about that well and hard. I'm not quite convinced, but it seems that both of us, we came together from somewhere in Asia. But when I think of the words, I can think of one word that has more or less the same meaning, both in Turkish and in Finnish, and that word is kalabalik. And in Finnish, we pronounce it kalapaliki. So it sounds very much the same thing. And when I was a kid, my father used to say as children, so kids, don't make any kalapaliki. And that meant kids, be quiet, don't be rowdy. So there is something that uh, brings us together. Um, indeed, um, there are three prominent Finnish speakers among us here today to address how Finland did it, how we reinvented ourselves. Uh, they will explain from their point of view how we have arrived where we are today. 100 years ago, Finland was a poor agrarian society. As a matter of fact, Finland only became independent in 1917. Before that, nearly for 200 years, we were part of the Russian Empire, and before that, uh, we were part of the Swedish should I call it empire? But anyway, independence since 1917. Today's Finland is a wealthy and a modern society, but still reinventing itself. And reinvention is something we have to do nowadays almost on a daily basis, as there are so many challenges. The world is changing very rapidly around us, as was pointed out by the previous uh, speakers. Um, but what are our values? How do we reinvent ourselves? And I would say that um, our values are such as equality. For instance, I think Finland was the first country in the world that gave voting rights to women in 1905. We also believe in education. We believe in equal access to education to everybody. Our society has a very low hierarchy. It's an open society. Finland is also a small nation. We are 5.3, 5.5 million today. That's the whole country. It's a bit more than Ankara when I think of it. And when you come from a small country, it means that everyone is important and nobody can be left behind. We need every single Finn to reinvent himself and herself and to work for the benefit of Finland. I personally also emphasize openness and interaction. Openness, interaction between people and between countries. I have been the Finnish ambassador to Turkey now for three years, three 
absolutely fantastic years when I've been following uh, what is going on in Turkey. I've been traveling around a lot and I have met lots of great inspiring people. And I have also been able to see that many, many Turkish people have been going to Finland and in particular young Turkish people studying in Finland as Erasmus students and in such a way contributing towards interaction and, uh, and openness between people and between the countries. So once again, thank you for inviting us. I hope, I'm sure you will find our speakers very interesting. That will be um, Mr. Risto Eji Pentila, who is the CEO of the Finland Chamber of Commerce. And that will be Professor Hanna Leniemi, who is a professor of education at the Helsinki University. And that will be Mr. Petteri um, Kolinen, who is the CEO of the Finnish Design Forum. So I'm looking forward to this day. I'm looking forward to being interactive and talking to as many of as you as possible. And I wish us all a successful day. Thank you. Kitospalion, Your Excellency. Thank you very much. Evet efendim, şimdi e, aslında panelimizin otu, e, açılış konuşmasını e, Sayın Büyükelçimiz yapmış oldu. E, artık panelimize geçebiliriz. Moderatörümüz, İndex İletişim Yönetim Kurulu Başkanı Sayın Yaprak Özer alkışlarla sahneye geliyor. geldiniz efendim. Buyurunuz. Ve panelistlerimiz Finlandiya Sanayi ve Ticaret Odası Başkanı Sayın Risto Pentila. to see you too. Please have a seat. Thank you. Thank you. Helsinki Üniversitesi Öğretim Üyesi Sayın Profesör Hannele Niemi geliyor. Hello, welcome to the stage. Thank you. Welcome to the stage, please. Ve efendim Sayın Özer'e iyi bir panel diliyorum ve size de iyi seyirler diliyorum. Buyurunuz Sayın Özer. Çok teşekkür ederim. Efendim sevgili dostlar, sayın konuklar, gazeteci arkadaşlarım ve tabii ki değerli sanayi odası yöneticileri, üyeleri aslında üretimin kendisi. Efendim bu görevi bana verdiğinde organizasyon komitesi dakika düşünmedim. Bunu yapmam gerekir dedim. Onun için bugün buradayım. Geçtiğimiz yıl, aslına bakarsanız ben Sanayi Kongresi'nin müptelasıyım. Her sene izlerim, çok şey öğrenirim. Arkadaki genç arkadaşlarımın da bundan sonraki tüm kongrelerde burada bulunmalarını öneriyorum. Bugünkü oturumun aslında konusu geçtiğimiz yılın bir devamı olan vasatlık. Biraz önce sevgili oylumla konuşurken ne iş olsa yaparım abi diye bir şey geçti aramızda. Birazcık gülüştük. Aslında ağlanacak halimize güldük. Ben 15 yıl önce bu başlıkta bir kitap yayınladım. Ne iş olsa yaparım abi diye. Bugün bu sahnede bunu anmak istemezdim. O gün ekonomik kriz nedeniyle aslında belki de işlerine son verilen işçiler, çalışanlar için yazılmıştı. Bugün ise eğer tekrar olacak olursa ki yazmam asla mesleksiz genç arkadaşlar için yazılması gereken bir kitap var. Efendim basatlıktan çıkmak için Finlandiya biraz önce ifade edildiği gibi Sayın Büyükelçinin ve bundan sonraki konuşmalarımızda sevgili konuklarımızın çok değerli bir örnek ve yakından takip etmemiz aslına bakarsanız satır aralarını içselleştirmemiz için gerekli bir örnek. Ve o kadar nazikler ki ben tabii ki bu rolü çaldığım için beni ayakta beklemekteler. Aslında bu nezaketi de onlardan sizleri yorduğum için çok özür dilerim. Farkında değilim. Lütfen buyurunuz. 
<gülüyor> Efendim, ben bir saati çok iyi değerlendirmekle görevlendirildim. Sorularla yönlendireceğim kendilerini ve konuşmalarının aslında sohbetimizi ufak bir prezentasyonla, sunumla başlatacaklar ki biz hem benim sorularıma hem de sizlerden gelebilecek olan sorulara bir temel oluşturalım diye. <gülüyor> biz vasatla savaş açabiliriz. Bu salon onu gösteriyor. Başlayalım efendim. Efendim sizinle başlamak isterim Sayın Pintela. E, Ticaret ve Sanayi Odası Başkanı. Bizimle ekonomiyle ilgili hem bir sunum paylaşacaksınız hem de ufak bir videonuz var. Dolayısıyla böyle biliyorum biraz tuhaf oluyor. Ben Türkçe konuşuyorum siz beni öyle dinliyorsunuz ama efendim buyurun sahne sizin. Arkasından da diğer konuk konuşmacımıza devam edeceğiz. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, I thought that uh, it was somebody this morning who said it's a cold morning here. So I thought that I'll show you what cold really is. There we go. Um, this is actually uh, could be Finland today. There's 25 centimeters of snow in north of uh, Finland. Uh, luckily, not in Helsinki yet. But uh, snow how is one thing that we do. Uh, we know how to deal with snow, but perhaps that's not the uh, success story that uh, the ambassador described. What I thought I'd do with you is uh, is explain five things about Finland that I think that have been important in our uh, uh, road from uh, relative uh, obscurity and poverty to uh, relative success. So five things I would like to share you about Finland and Finland's formula of success. Number one, it's of course women. <laughs> uh, women, <laughs> that's our secret weapon. Uh, women um, in the workforce, uh, if you look at this picture, uh, the lady in the front is probably a manager. Why? Because Finland has the most female managers uh, of any country in the world. The share of we women managers is the highest in Finland. When we go to highest uh, uh, positions, CEOs and chairmen, they are still majority are men, uh, but even there, Finland scores quite well in terms of uh, chief executives and uh, board positions uh, among the top countries in Europe. The interesting thing about this is that women do better in school and they get better reviews in the workplace than men do, both from their superiors and for the people who they work with. And uh, there aren't female quotas in Finland, and my position has been very clear. Women do not need quotas in Finland. Men will need them very soon. So that's number one, uh, uh, women. Uh, second is new technology. Industry, I think, unites Finland and Turkey. Finland's sh uh, uh, the share of industry in our uh, uh, uh, national pr product is about 20%, so we are very much still a country of engineers. Uh, our prime minister actually today is an engineer and he runs the country as he would run his own company, which he used to run before becoming engineer. Why I'm s showing this is that it's not an iPad, it's actually a new Nokia product. As you know, Nokia had some difficulties a couple of years back uh, now and had to sell about half of its worth. Uh, they got rid of the handsets, phones, but the good news is that Nokia is growing very fast. They sold off 50% and now they're growing very fast and are going to be one of the major companies in Europe within a few years again. So I think that technology, and that was very much the message I heard from my colleagues in the Istanbul Chamber of Industry, 
uh, industry and renewal in industry is very much what needs to be done still. Education for all, my colleague will tell more about that, but I'll just say that we have smart kids, uh, but the thing really is that we have smart teachers. Back when I was in school, I was the third best in my school, the third best student. What happened to the two girls who were better than I was? They both became teachers. Teaching is a very well-respected profession in Finland, and unluckily I wasn't good enough to make it, but luckily for Finland, those who did become teachers, they are very committed. So that's certainly one of the secrets of success for Finland. Low hierarchy, I think that uh, the ambassador already mentioned this. I would claim that every Finn is two, maximum three phone calls away. If you really need to talk to somebody, then it's two maximum of three phone calls and you will be talking to this person. Here, low hierarchy, uh, one of these persons is the owner of the company. You wouldn't know which one it is. Uh, it's one of the women, incidentally. So the idea of, of, of, of, of, of working on the same level regardless of your rank is something that I think we believe in. Culture of trust, Finland ranks very well in, in uh, the transparency index. Uh, there's very little of corruption. I always say that's because we are not innovative enough to be corrupt, uh, but m perhaps there are other reasons as well. But it is something that I think that is tested when times are rough. And at the moment, times are rough. I, I like the, uh, the, the, the cartoon that we saw. It was Turkey and Finland have had a very similar road. But I think that we are all facing uh, very uh, serious challenges at the time. So the idea that you can trust institutions, you can trust your colleagues, is hugely important. So to recap, uh, three groups of people, women, engineers, and teachers, culture of trust, and lack of hierarchy. That's it. Çok teşekkürler. Ama sizi oturmadan önce hemen bir eğitime pas atmak istiyorum aslında. Bizim bir pardon. Sorry. Sizi oturtmadan önce aslında küçük bir sorum olacak eğitimle eğitim prezentasyonundan önce. Biz nüfusu 80 milyona duyabiliyor musunuz ya da tercüme alabiliyor musunuz? 80 milyona dayanan bir nüfusumuz sizin beş buçuk, bizim İstanbul'umuzun neredeyse neyi beşte biri falan gibi bir şey ya da dörtte biri gibi bir şey yani öyle bir şeyden söz ediyoruz. Kişi başına düşen geliriniz 40-50 bin dolarlarda. Biz de dua ediyoruz burada ki dolar inip çıkmasın kişi başına gelirimiz inip çıkmasın. Kağıt üstünde güzel gözüksün diye. <gülüyor> Efendim bizim bir de 2023 hedefimiz var. Biz bu hedefe doğru giderken arada bir acaba tutturabilecek miyiz diyoruz. Çok zor bir soru sorduğumun farkındayım. Sizin hedefleriniz var mıdır böyle ya da en yakın hedefiniz nedir? Bir cümleyle izah etmek gerekirse ne derdiniz? Well, I, I think the one goal that we have is to make sure that we can guarantee a good life for everyone. That's sort of the, the, the goal that everyone has. And then you start from that, and then you see that you need growth for that. And in order to create growth, you need to restructure quite a lot of things in industry, and you need to do things in a new way, way in politics. But I think that the common goal is the one that sort of unites us and keeps us going. But you're absolutely right that it's much easier done in a small country. An Indian person told me when he heard that Finland has five million people and he said, oh my God, we have more blind people in India than that. So. <laughs> Benim aslında söylemek istediğimiz yeah. siz gayet net yeah. ifade ettiniz. Yeah. Beş buçuk yeah. milyon e, bizim sizden alacağımız çok büyük bir örnek var. Efendim Finlandiya örneğini sizlerden dinleyeceğiz. Lütfen istirahat buyurun. E, Sayın Hanella e, Neymi, dünyanın tanıdığı bir eğitimci. Sizi şimdi sunumunuzu yapmak üzere davet etmek istiyorum. Eğitim konusunda bizimle paylaşacağınız bir video 
ve bir sunumunuz var. Buyurun efendim. Yeah. So, first of all, I would like to thank you for invitation to be here. And after short video, I have great pleasure to introduce some features of Finnish educational system. Teachers and a student-centered approach lie at the heart of learning. Research shows that three-quarters of the Finnish population believe that the Finnish comprehensive school system is one of the most noteworthy factors in Finnish history and creates a foundation for well-being. One of the key tenets of the Finnish education system is that it offers everybody equal opportunities for learning, irrespective of domicile, sex, socioeconomic status, or linguistic and cultural background. The school network is regionally extensive. Basic education is completely free of charge, including instruction, school materials, school meals, health care, dental care, commuting, special needs education, and remedial teaching. The gap between the top and bottom performing schools in Finland is one of the narrowest in the world. The education system gives each student great flexibility. Binding decisions are not expected to be made at an early stage. Instead, the road all the way to tertiary education is untracked, with none of the paths leading to a dead end. did it in education. So your theme for this Congress is human and culture. And I think that these are the basis for success and development. And I have great pleasure today introduce how our educational system is working. So before 2000, nobody didn't know what is Finland as an educational country. But then came first so-called PISA results, which is international achievement outcome measurements. And we could find that Finland was first in reading, mathematical literacy, science literacy, in several rounds of PISA measurements. Still 2012, after 12 years, we are the best in Europe, but best in the world, among best in the world. And now I could ask why we are not anymore the first thinking the global world. I think that there are some very important countries coming in education. And you can find there Singapore, which is the top country, Korea, Japan, and Asian countries. Now we can ask, what are differences? Finland has been excellent, it's still excellent, but Asian countries. I think that one of the main reasons is that in Asian countries, students, pupils in schools, they work hours and hours. Parents had to put more and more investments after their school as extra tuition, homework, and students are very exhausted. And now Singapore asked Finnish experts how you have achieved high learning outcomes, and we can tell, yes, very short time in day in schools, no extra tuition, no compulsory homework, or very little. Why that is? We say that quality in schools and equal opportunities are the most important. Nowadays, Singapore has a slogan, 
teach less, learn more, which means that school is an important place for having all these services and facilities for high-quality life. Very often people ask, you served warm lunch every day in schools for every children free of charge. Is that the main reason for your success? I could say, yes, that is a very important part, because we want to take holistically care of every children's well-being. But that is not the only reason. There are several other reasons, and I think that we should think about what happened in late 70s, early 80s, when Finland moved totally parallel system to new understanding of education and have this strong emphasis of equal opportunities, which means that every children must have good education and every children are included, even if they have learning difficulties, to the classrooms and have high education. As you could said, see in the movie before, there was what is flexible structure. That means that there are no dead ends in our educational system. If student fails in some phase of their life, at some level of educational system, they always have some options and parts for getting educational services later on. So that means that there is not so dramatic if you fail, but you need support, and you need support from your home, but in the local community, from all these services which makes good life. Health, social services, and all these which provides opportunities for growth and development. So, these equal opportunities, that potential of every individual should be maximized. I think that that is the basis philosophy of Finnish educational system. And that is something what we can have in the whole educational system. You can see there red, those blue boxes from preschool until adult education. We have educational ecosystem, which means that you always are prepared to continue your education in the next phase, at the next level, which means that learning to learn skills are the most important, and how we can support students' holistic personal growth, not only learning math or learning languages, also to support them growing as a human being. So, equity, flexible structures, high-level education. So, I think that we can have these different aspects working together. And there is very strongly also how we evaluate our students and what are teachers' quality. And I think all these different issues connect trust. As my colleague Risto Pentila just mentioned, in the Finnish system, trust is a very important concept. We trust on our teachers, we trust our local providers. We support them also. So, teachers, they have to take responsibility at local level. Nationally, we have only very wide frames, and local schools are implementing, creating together their 
own plan, how they teach, what are their services for students. So it means supporting every student's learning and learning skills. In collaboration, parents, multi-professional groups, there are also healthcare providers and social workers, and that means that we want to support different kinds of learners' opportunities, also those who have difficulties, either in their social background or in their classroom work. Teachers have a lot of freedom. Schools have freedom to make their own plans, but also how they evaluate. We don't have standardized testing. We don't have inspection in Finland. We trust teachers that they do their work and they are very qualified. And I think that those international measurements have given evidence that they really can do their work in very high level. So, what makes Finnish teachers different? All have master level, five-year academic degree consisting content knowledge and pedagogical knowledge. We don't have that testing system, we don't have inspectorate, all belong teacher union, and we, they have not high salary, it's moderate level, but what is important, they are very committed to their profession. These are bases, and that means that then they can do this evaluation without national testing. Their work is encourage students' learning, and the whole system is working. That when we are assessing something, when we are evaluating something, it is for development purpose, not just having those outcomes, but it is mainly basis how we can develop our system. So, just thinking how we could have joint knowledge creation for the future, it starts in schools, the basis is creating there, that we learn to work together, and we also have support for our personalized learning, including how to use technology. Learning is changing. Learning spaces are changing. We can learn everywhere. We speak about what is new classroom. Is it like our living room? Not any formal classroom, maybe. What we are trying to do nowadays is that so, sorry, that, uh, that teachers and students are learning together. We are not in fixed states. Every time we need new scenarios how to develop education for all. Thank you so much, and now I give floor for discussions. Good. Çok teşekkürler. Hemen hiç vakit geçirmeden. Aslında belki takarsanız ilk sorumu size sormak istiyorum. Aramızda kesin bir kültür farkı var. Sizi anlamamız, sizin bizi anlamanız nasıl mümkün olacak? Sorry, I have to. Teknoloji, aletler. Nasıl rahat mısınız? Şimdi olabildi mi? Yes, Peki. No, no, no. Tam şunu söylüyordum aslında. Diyordum ki bizim aramızda bizim birbirimizi anlamamız, anlamayı çok istiyoruz. Sizin anlattıklarınız harikulade. Ama bir kültür farkı var. Konuşmanızın başlığı özgürlük ve sorumluluk. Bizim topraklarımızda tersine işliyor bu. Özgür bırakırsanız sorumluluk vermezsiniz. Sorumluluk verirseniz aslında özgürlüğünü kısıtlarsınız. Aman yanlış yapmasın diye. Siz korkmuyor musunuz? Bu kadar 
eğitmene özgürlük verdiğinizi ifade ediyorsunuz. Bunun altında bilmediğimiz bir bit yeni mi var yoksa gerçekten bu insanlar özgür özgür mü? Thank you. That's a very important question. And I think that the teacher education is very important because their new student teachers internalized that they are doing really important work in the country. And it's very selective whom we can take and want to take to teach education programs. I can tell that there are teacher education is one of the most wanted academic program. That means that we can take wonderful, talented new applicants to teach education. And I think that that's very important that then they really have the idea that teaching is important for the human being, but also for the whole country. I, I can't see real danger in our case that if we give freedom, it's not used in a right way. Anlıyorum. E, i̇lave etmek istediğiniz bir şey olabilir mi acaba? Yoksa aslında şöyle bir detay var. Yani e, öğretmenlerden ne bekleniyor? Evet, işte master derecesi alsınlar. E, çok e, iyi eğitimli, donanımlı olsunlar. Ama o sıranın listenizin, uzun listenizin altında bu özgür bıraktığınız öğretmenlerin aslında siz araştırmacı olması gerekli olduğunu söylüyorsunuz. E, meslek etiği evet. ya da öğretme etiği dediğiniz bir kavram var orada. Onu sahiplenmiş olmasını bekliyorsunuz. Bir de diyorsunuz ki teoriyle pratiği bir arada getirmesi lazım. Şimdi bunları nasıl ölçtüğünüzü ben açıkçası merak ediyorum. İşe alırken bu öğretmenleri ya da bu öğretmenleri sahaya gönderirken. <gülüyor> right. Yes, certainly there are some basic requirements which everybody has to fulfill in their academic degree. But then, when hiring at local level, I think that it's very important that principals are interviewing, having evidence how this teacher would like to develop school and in which way they join our team for being a good member for having this school working well. I, I think that this kind of discussion, and very often there are also some board who are discussing with new teacher, is important being sure that they really understand what are the aims and targets of this school. So I think that there is not so big miracles in, in, in education, but there are some internalized cultural issues which must be there, and then we don't control so much. Anlıyorum, görülüyor. Efendim, ekonomide bu nasıl oluyor? Yani e, tabii size hemen sormak istediğim konulardan bir tanesi eğitime ulusal bütçeden ne kadar ayırdığınızı merak ediyorum. Bir Finli bir çocuk dünyaya geldiği gün itibariyle madem eğitim bu kadar önemli ona ne kadar yatırım yaptığınızı da merak ediyorum. Böyle bir rakam paylaşırsanız belki dudaklarımız mı uçuklar, gözlerimizi mi bayağı açarız bilemiyorum. No, um, I, I, I don't have the figures, but I, d I know that we are about in the, uh, we are average in the OECD as much we uh, spend money in ed education, so it's not done through money. And I think the key issue here is this uh, point that you took up, uh, which is responsibility and freedom. Because if you look at the economy as well, the way Finnish companies are run is clear targets, and then go do it. You trust the teams to come up with the ideas as to 
how to achieve these targets. Yani söylemeye yeah. çalıştığınız şey aslında biz bunu yalnızca öğretmenlere değil, ekonomide ya da bütün vatandaşlarımıza yapıyoruz. Hadi şimdi sıra sende diyoruz ve onlardan performans bekliyoruz diyorsunuz. I think that the, that the most in, interesting thing might be the military. <laughs> um, in Finland as in Turkey, every man, uh, man has to do a military service. But the idea there is that you teach every conscript that you must be able to perform your duties even if your supervisor is not present. So that sort of unit team autonomy in economy in the military and in schools. I don't know whether the school uh, uh, teachers like this comparison between the military and, and schools, but I see that as something that that's, you want to delegate trust and responsibility to a lower level. Anlıyorum. Çok değişik. Öğreneceğiz bunları. Zaten bugün burada sizden acaba ne öğrenebiliriz diye. Fakat buradayız. E, satırlarınızın arasında şöyle bir şey mi seziyorum? Yani şu soruyu sormadan geçemeyeceğim. Zenginlik sizin için ne demek? Siz bayağı zengin bir ülkesiniz aslında. Öyle bakmayın nüfusunuzun beş buçuk milyon olmasına ama yani sizin için cebinde para olması mı önemli? Ben ben bu hafta sonu ve bütün geçtiğimiz hafta Finlandiya ile ilgili bayağı bir okuma yaptım. E, okudukça okuyası geliyor insanın değişik bir şeyler. E, ama yani gördüm ki sizden de bu sorunun cevabı, bu soru da değil aslında, garip bir şey, şey yapacağım ama cebinde çok parası olan mı zengin sizin için, kafasında çok bilgisi olan mı? Well, I think it's the latter and uh, wealth I think that uh, is, is what allows you to lead a good life and uh, it may be that uh, Bir de tabi bu arada şu good life'ın bir tanımını yapar mısınız bizim için? İkidir kullanıyorsunuz çünkü bunu. Zenginliğe de biraz oradan geldim. Neymiş bu iyi hayat? Yeah. It's a opportunities. And it's the, uh, the, the, the most important thing is that you can realize your own potential. And that I think that is a cultural thing and it's supported by the educational system. The flip side representing economy is that when wealth is seen more in non-monetary terms than in terms of earning more money, that there's a side saying that nobody should earn too much and if you don't have uh, financial rewards in the system, then you do not get growth. So I think that this sort of nice thing about seeing wealth as having opportunities and a good life, the flip side is that at the moment Finland has been going for four years without growth. And to balance sort of the idea that uh, you need growth and financial uh, in, uh, uh, rewards to, to, to have growth, and combine this with the idea of wealth is more than just money is something that we are struggling with a bit now. Anlıyorum. Şimdi sizin tekrar bu dört yıldır büyümeme durumunuzla ilgili bir soru soracağım ama Sayın e, Niyemi size sorayım. Eğitime ne kadar para harcıyorsunuz? Sizin söyleyebileceğiniz bir rakam var mı? Biz burada böyle rakamlara bayılırız. I think it's around six percent of our cross product. So it's very difficult to say what that is in euros. But what I can tell that in OECD countries, I think that we are almost average, a little, little above average. So we are not the country that is investing the most in education. And that has been also one very important reason why we also want to emphasize effectiveness of education. So that there must be infrastructure, there must be effective ways to manage this, this system. And I think that in that sense we have succeeded quite well, even though we, that's not the highest investment country in education. Anlıyorum, teşekkür ederim. Dört yıl üst üste büyüme ya da düşük büyüme oranlarıyla gittiniz ama eğitimde çok iyi kadronuz var. Çok da iyi 
e, aslında bir insan kaynağına sahipsiniz. Evet, bütün dünya allak bullak oldu. Sizin de aslında küresel e, işte Çin'in e, küçülmesi, daha doğrusu büyüme oranındaki zayıflama, Rusya partneriniz olarak e, ciddi bir ekonomik kriz geçiriyor. Kağıt endüstrisi sizin için çok önemli gibi gibi. Ama yani burada acaba şu soruyu sormadan geçemiyorum. E, niye öngöremediniz ya da öngörmeli miydiniz? Ee, ne oldu? O dört yıl üst üste e, acaba yani belki kendi kendinize geldiğiniz bir nokta vardır. Paylaşmak ister misiniz diye soruyorum. Eğitim ile aslında ekonominin işbirliği, yöneticilerin aslına bakarsanız eğitimleri öngörebilmek gibi bir belki harmanlama istiyorum sizden. Büyük bir soru gene. I mentioned four years, um, but it's actually been longer than that. But since 2008, we haven't done uh, very well. And uh, that there's one important lesson, which is reform early. And we didn't do that. Nokia didn't do that, and they had to sell their handsets. And Finnish political system didn't do it. We've had uh, three or four governments uh, that haven't instituted new reforms. And now the current government is finally doing it and looking at it from the business point of view, I think about 10 years too late. So the reason why we are not doing well is that we had Nokia, we had the best school in the world. We thought we had it made, we thought we didn't need to reform. And now we are making reforms very, very rapidly in order to get back into the swing of things. Yani acıttıktan sonra siz tekrar kendinize dönüp baktınız. Aslında Nokia örneğini söylediğinize göre eski başbakanlarınızdan bir tanesinin bir açıklaması vardı. Nokia o kadar kendisine güvendi ki aslında aslında hep teyakkuzda olması gerekirdi. Şimdi siz onu tekrarlıyor gibi bir söylem içerisindesiniz. Doğru mudur bunu? Doğru mu anladık aslında? I think I agree with that. Uh, and uh, not only Nokia got uh, uh, overly self-confident, but Finnish national economy, the Finnish people thought that 3% growth, it comes automatically. We don't have to do anything. It just comes uh, automatically. And when you start thinking in those terms, then your public finances are geared towards 3% growth. And when you don't have that, then you're in difficulties. So it's been a tough learning lesson for us. Uh, what I th would uh, say that uh, when I looked at how Turkey's and, and the car had gone in the Turkey's economy, it's very similar to that in Finland. We had a huge crisis in the early 1990s. We were at the on the bottom of the OAS OECD then. And then we reformed and went uh, to a, a very good uh, growth pattern And now it's the same sort of thing that uh, we are going through a crisis and I think coming out of this crisis is going to be a much brighter future for us. The sad thing is that it seems to be very difficult to reform anything without the crisis. Peki burada suçlayacağınız herhangi birileri var mı öngöremeyen? Yani şuraya gelmek istiyorum. Aslında siz e, hayat boyu öğrenmeyi e, ülkede ulusal bir kültür ve e, ekonominin, eğitimin bir parçası haline getirmişsiniz. Şimdi hayat boyu öğrenirken ha, bunu öngörememiştik, şimdi de bunu öğrendik diyorsunuz aslında. E, bu um, fazla güven belki belli başlı meslek gruplarına mı acaba e, kendilerinde oluşan bir tortu oldu? Yani burada ne diyebilirsiniz? Çocukları çok iyi eğitiyoruz da acaba eğiteceğimiz büyükler de mi var? Um, I don't think that you can train people to, to, to, to, for the future too much. You can give them uh, uh, skills for dealing with the future. If we know that between one third and, and half of all the current professions will be gone in 15 years. So I think that the key is to, to, to prepare uh, kids and adults with skills that they can use in different places. And, and again, I think that if, if, if somebody ought to be blamed for the state Finland is, then I would share the blame between 
politicians and executives. The executives weren't awake enough to see how the market was changing. Uh, politicians thought that uh, we didn't have to reform. So I think that's evenly uh, uh, shared blame between the private sector and the public sector. Gayet politik bir cevaptı. Teşekkür ediyorum. Sayın niye mi? <gülüyor> Eğitim ve ekonomi birbiriyle nasıl el ele gidiyor mu? Yani stratejilerinizi yaparken ekonomi, e, siyaset ve eğitim bir araya gelir, e, uzun e, dönemli e, planlar yapar mısınız? Right. Yeah, that's very important that all these segments are working together. And I think that in Finland, the main level of educational resources is at local level, at municipal or city provider level. So that means that in each city there should be clear understanding what are educational needs in this region. And that is not only that providing teachers work in, in classrooms, it's much more also how other segments like health and social services are supporting. Because every time when it's economical crisis, the biggest danger are those children who are in danger of dropping out. And because their family reason, very often unemployment or some other reasons that parents can't take the full responsibility. And I think that as a small country, we have focused very much how we ensure that nobody is not left behind. And that means that that kind of economic planning is important. That means resources for special need education. But I think that that is not only that we focused on weak students. I think that at the same time, there must be clear understanding that we are creating future and providing new learning methods, environments, new resources to everybody. So in such a way that they can learn those skills needed in, in the future. So I think that the local level planning is important. Nationally, there are big guidelines from the Ministry of Education, but without economic resources, we can't do. That is very, very much connected. And I'm afraid that if we are cutting very much from education, consequences we can see in the future and very dramatic consequences. Hemen sözlerinizin arasından hiç kimseyi geride bırakmıyoruz dediğiniz o kalıbı ve bunu da her yerde kullanıyorsunuz aslında. Almak istiyorum ee, ve tabii size de aslında sorumun bir bölümü. Çok güzel bir şey, eşitlikçi. Yani kimse geride kalmasın. Bütün çocuklarımız eşit şekilde eğitilsinler. Fakat bu rekabeti Ee, bir miktar acaba zedelemiyor mu diye sormaktan da kendimi alamadım ee, incelerken sistemi. Biraz durduruyor, frene basıyor, onu bekliyor. Oysa bırakın gitsin, elensin, iyiler gelsin. Bu da bir bakış açısı. Belki biraz tırnaklarını çıkartmış gibi ama ne düşünüyorsunuz? Yani biz bu taraftaki dünya mı böyle biraz karamsar ya da böyle bir e, şeyiz ama e, bunu sormadan edemeyeceğim. Size de tabii ki ekonomide nasıl bir e, bir şey yaratıyor bu e, duraksama mı yaratıyor e, yoksa iyilerle mi gitmek lazım? Çok hat iyi hatırlıyorum ki çok aslında büyük CEO'lar zamanın çok ünlüleri A'larla çalışırım, B'lerle değil diyecek kadar ileri götürmüş bir rekabet anlayışları vardı. Well, first of all, the school system and competition. I think the good side about the uh, Finnish school system is that we have very skillful workers. You don't have to worry, everyone knows their mathematics and, and they can read and write really well. Mm -hmm. So that's really good. But the theme of your conference is how to escape mediocrity. 
And I think that that is the same theme and, that, and challenge we are, we are uh, tackling uh, in, in Finland. And the issue is that we have a very good system where no one is left behind, but nobody's really good. And when you go from the sort of basic education to higher education and universities, what we have been trying to do is to create opportunities for top people to learn in Finland so that they wouldn't need to leave Finland. So escaping mediocrity is even more important, I think, in Finland because of the egalitarian system than it might be here. So I totally agree that the system is good, it's egalitarian, but how do you get the edge in the competition with others? And that's where you, of course, have to introduce market mechanisms. And the big, from the uh, business side point of view, we need more market uh, uh, mechanisms in the system. Our tax rates are too high, it, there's too much regulation, so that's, that's sort of the, the, the trouble that we see at the moment. Anlıyorum. Ee, Sayın Yem, sizin buna ilave right. edeceğiniz bir şey mutlaka yeah. vardır. All right. So, I think that in the competition we can have different kinds of perspectives. One important principle is that we don't like to put schools comp competing against each other. The main principle is that every school should be a school good school, so that parents don't need to be afraid to which school they send their kids. So competition in that sense, I think that we don't need that, that schools are competing. But then thinking what happened at personal level, we, even though we have the national objectives for every children, how they have to learn something during basic education. There are a lot of opportunities to maximize everyone's opportunities if they ever have capacity. And I think that nowadays when there are so much resources in, in knowledge um, environment, we can also help those very skillful students to get so, so forward as possible that they can get maximizing their own personal life. That's why we more and more speak about personalized learning inside our comprehensive school. And I think that competition is not a real key element if thinking that how we help people to continue their education. I think that it's not based on competition, it's based on their motivation, on those um, structural parts that educational system provides them. So I think that, that we need some kind of driving forces, we need motivation, support for that, but don't make competition in a such uh, manner that someone's opportunities are cut off because of that comp competition. Hemen şu rekabetle ilgili olarak şunu da sormak e, isterim. Pizza testleri bu ülkede son yıllarda herhalde aldığımız kötü notlar nedeniyle canımızı yakıyor. Bu nedenle de hakikaten ne diyeyim negatif yönde popüler. Siz de bu pizza testlerinin hep üst sıralarındasınız. Ee, Finli çocuklar matematikte, fende ve kendi dillerinde çok iyi performans gösteriyor. Nedense bizim çocuklarımız kendi dillerinde okuduklarını dahi anlamakta güçlük çekiyor ve aşağıdalar. Şimdi siz diyorsunuz ki biz ölçülmüyoruz, kimse kimseyi ölçmüyor ama PISA testlerinde de sürekli bir şekilde e, aslında ölçülüyorsunuz. Yani bunda bir, bir paradoksal bir durum mu var? E, bir de ikincisi, siz nasıl yapıyorsunuz da yapıyorsunuz, en yüksek numaraları, notları alıyorsunuz? <gülüyor> yeah, so if I'm honest, the first PISA outcomes, it was a big surprise for us. We didn't know that we are good in education. I think it's, it's some kind of Finnish basic mentality that, that we don't 
see our, our good points. But I think that it is um, the, the PISA outcomes are based on very persistent work for education. So that, that there are, for example, the, this idea that, that every school should be a good school. And in fact, in PISA results, there, we very often see only these ranking orders. There are a lot more information, and that information tells, for example, whether there are big differences between schools. And in Finland, the differences of school, between schools are the smallest in, in the world, which means that the real the idea that everybody has equal opportunities is working. So, I, I'm traveling quite a lot and telling about Finnish educational system, and very often there are also questions or, or at how we can do better in, in PISA results. And I think that there is not global answer to that, because it's depending on so many issues. But I think that quality of teachers and supporting different kinds of learners are key, key issues for that. For us, PISA results is mainly information how to develop something. It's not some kind of celebration, it's more information for development. Sizin katkılarınızı alalım bu soruya. Well, there is a paradox. If you look at Finnish school kids, they start the school later than anywhere else in the world at the age of seven. They have longer summer vacations than anywhere else in the world. They have less homework than anywhere else in the world. Uh, they have less of everything, and still they do very well when they're 15 in PISA results. So the school system, yes, and we've heard a lot about that, but I think they have, there are some other reasons as well. It's a very homogeneous population. Everyone comes to school with the same knowledge, and they've been to the kindergarten beforehand. So it's very sort of, you don't have to start from scratch with anyone. Secondly, it's a very phonetic language. Uh, it's written as it's spoken. Uh, thirdly, the TV has subtitles. All the, all the films are in English, but there are subtitles, so if you're interested in what James Bond actually says, you have to read it very quickly. So there are things that are beyond the sort of the, the uh, educational system that I think that are important. Uh, so that's the reason why I think that the Finnish educational experts say that you can't just take the Finnish model and, and replant it somewhere, because it's so dependent on cultural factors. Küçük bir teknik uyarı. E, kulaklıklarımızla mikrofonlarımız birbirinden biraz ayrılırsa daha iyi ses gidecekmiş. Onun uyarısını aldım. Sona doğru yaklaşıyoruz. Aslında salondan ben e, soru mutlaka vardır diye e, tahmin ediyorum. Ben sorularımı sorarken salondaki e, dostlarımıza da aslında sorularını sorma fırsatını vermek isterim. Gözüm bir yandan da sizlerde olacak. Ama bu arada sorularıma devam etmek isterim. Çünkü bir tane de çok önemli bulduğum konu, siz aslında eğitim verirken eğitiminizi ben okul eğitiminden çok yurttaşlık eğitimi gibi bir eğitim algıladım. Yani bu bir vatandaşlık eğitimi gibi. Bu doğru mu algılamışım, yanlış mı acaba? Ne dersiniz? Siz eğitimde daha farklı bir metod izliyorsunuz. Bizim unuttuğumuz bir şey, yurttaşlık eğitimi. Ve bunun ekonomiye yeah. katkısı nedir? Tahmin ediyorum ki yüksektir. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that part is hugely important. Howard Gardner, who is a Harvard professor and, and, and a pioneer in, in, in, in uh, how the mind works and, and in the educational system, he visited Finland and asked uh, uh, uh, a Finnish school teacher that what is your most important mission with your students? And when the teacher said, my most important mission is to make them good citizens, 
he was very impressed. So I think that that is something that um, that we see in the educational system. Sorry, uh, uh, in the educational system as being hugely important. That it is not just skills, but it's learning to live and work with other people. Soru gene aslında arkada bir soru var. Eğer e, evet var, birkaç tane soru var. Mikrofon önde sorularımız var. Bu kadar soruya zamanımız yok. Ben tamamıyla organ. Evet. Bu arada size mikrofon ulaşana kadar şunu sorayım. Joy of learning diye bir şey var. Bizde çocuklar hiç e, öğrenirken eğlenmezler, öğrenirken keyif almazlar. Böyle bir şey bize öğretilmedi. Siz bunu turistik bir cümle olarak mı yazıyorsunuz? Yoksa gerçekten hakik böyle sizin ülkenizde insanlar öğrenirken hakikaten eğleniyorlar mı? Nasıl oluyor bu iş? Yeah, yeah. that's very, very important aspect to learning. How that can be also enjoyable and having fun. So we have had some research on that area and we could see that having positive mind, positive atmosphere, positive emotional sense on, on learning, it's so important because you are a whole person who is learning. You feel secure but also enthusiasm and you are open to different kinds of things. It's very important. But then it's also needed some kind of effort. It's not only that everything is so happy, everything goes very well. Yes, that is important. But then when it's combining effort, overcoming some difficulties, you have to, to make hard work. And then combining these together is important. Sometimes that's called as flow, which means that you are very inspired to do something and you are very much hardworking for getting your aims. So I think that the fun is important, but it must be connected to something. Salonda seçemiyorum ama bir soru alalım hemen. Buyurun. Açıklamalarınız için çok teşekkür ediyorum. Geldiğiniz için de çok teşekkür ediyorum. Eğitim sisteminin içerisinde çok büyük bir eksikliğinizin olduğunu fark ettim. Siyaset yok orada. Ben... <gülüyor> Siyaset kurumu sizin eğitim sisteminizin neresinde ve ne kadar olabiliyor? Bize sanıyorum gerekli olan en çok gerekli olan bilgilerden birisi de bu olacak. Teşekkür ediyorum. I think that there was a time in the 1970s when uh, uh, schools and uh, education was politicized and then we managed to get rid of that and it's all very pragmatic now. Diğer soruları, eğer kısa kısa sorular olursa bir, bir te tempolu bir süreç yaşayabiliriz diye düşünüyorum. Buyurun efendim. Öncelikle herkes saygıyla selamlıyorum. Ülkemize hoş geldiniz. Benim sormak istediğim şu. Şimdi Finlandiya'nın evet gayri safi milli hasırası yüksek, kişi başına düşen milli geliri fazla. fazla. Bir dönem yani böyle işte bu gayri safi milli hasırının yüksekliğinden dolayı insanlara bir işte şunu ücretsiz veriyoruz, bunu ücretsiz veriyor. Eğitimde işte şuradan başlamak suretiyle her şeyi ücretsiz yapıyoruz olayı vardı sunumda. Bu insanlarda bir e, hazıra e, alışmışlık yapmış mı e, insanlara bu kadar ücretsiz bir şeyler verme veya, veya da işte bu kadar güvenme insanlarda bir e, hazıra alışmışlık yapıp da tembelliğe dü, e, düşürmüş mü insanlar? Anlıyorum. De, de, deniyor ki kısaca sizin bu sistem insanları rahata alıştırdı mı? Bunlarda bir gariplik yok mu sizde? Bizde olsaydı olurdu demek istiyor. Uh, very good question. I think that when it comes to free basic education, no one challenges that. Everyone thinks that's a good thing. 
uh, when it comes to uh, social benefits, then there's a lot of discussion that if you can get the same money without working as you get when you're working, then that sort of makes you a bit lazy. So there's a lot of uh, talk about that, and I think that uh, the issue where we see that is more sort of social benefits and the labor markets. That's where the discussion is, not in the provision of health or educational system uh, services. Efendim, son bir iki soruyu e, tekrar almak isterim. Mikrofon, ha, buyurun, buyurun, buyurun. Ses. Azmi, e... Galiba aynı anda iki tane mikrofonumuz var. İki soruyu da e, izin verin bekletelim. Siz başlamıştınız konuşmaya. Azmi, Lütfen soy, alalım. E, gelecek eğitimde platformu şunu e, sormak istiyorum. Eğitimin odağında öğretmen var. Bizde sanat fakültelerinin heykel tıraş bölümüne öğrenci alınırken özel yetenek sınavı istenirken insan binasını inşa eden eğitim fakültelerinde öğrenci kabulünde hiçbir kriter yok. Yani eşit ağırlık puanını alan birisi öğretmen olabiliyor. Finlandiya'da öğretmen e, yetiştiren fakültelere, eğitim fakültelerine öğrenci kabulde bir kriter var mı? Onu merak ediyorum. Teşekkür ederim. Yeah, that's a very important question. And in our case, there must be a high school matriculation this, as basis. But then, the academic uh, success in high school is not enough. There, th that is only some basic screening. And then there must be also there are examination entrance tests which are organized nationally and also together by universities together. This examination is partly uh, cognitive, part it also trying to analyze their analytical skills and opportunities to make conclusions based on their reading, not only repeating. Then there is interview and, and also some other kind of, I could say, demonstrations there, they, where applicants can show their social skills. So that is very many level examinations and who then pass that all. That is then real wonderful many, many talented students. That is our resource, because even though we could select much more, there would be excellent, but this, because we have this quarter based on the needs of teachers in the next coming years. That's why there we can take only certain amount, and that means that that is very selected group of students. Teşekkür ederim. Bir sorumuz buradan var. Hemen alalım istiyorum. Çünkü zamanımızı doldurduğumuzu işaret ediyorlar. Çok özür dilerim. Görmedim. Siz benim kontenjanımdan soracaksınız. <gülüyor> Bir tane burada sorumuz var. Hemen döneceğim. <gülüyor> Affedersiniz. Tamam mı? Öncelikle bu değerli bilgiler için çok teşekkür ediyoruz. Gerçekten çok faydalı. Ee, şunu bir ilk önce ortaya koymak istiyorum. Aşağı yukarı e, bağımsızlık e, mücadelemizin tarihleri eşit. E, 5,5 milyon e, Finlandiya, 80 milyon Türkiye. E, aşağı yukarı bizim orta öğretimdeki öğrenci sayısımızın yarısı kadar. Dolayısıyla onlarda hızlı bir yol kat edilmiş. Umarım biz bu hızı ileride kapatırız. Burada iki tane noktayı merak ediyorum. Bir tanesi sanayi için, hani çok ciddi bir sanayi ülkesi olmamasına rağmen mesleki eğitim formatı nasıldır? Bunu merak ediyorum. İkincisi de öğretmenlere, bu yetenekli öğretmenleri tutabilmek için ya da üniversitelerde tercih ettirmek için ya da meslek olarak tercih ettirmek için ne gibi cezbedici şeyler konuluyor ortaya? Teşekkür evet. ediyorum. Sanayide aslında meslek eğitimi çok önemli bir soru ve de öğretmenleri elde tutabilmek için ne yapıyorsunuz aslına bakarsanız? Belki bir ikiye bölebiliriz bu soruyu. 
siz sanayi ile ilgili. Okay, first on the vocational training. At the age of 15, uh, people can choose to go either uh, uh, the high school or vocational school. So that's one step. Secondly, after uh, you're at the age of 18, when you finish high school, there's a vocational, more vocational route and more academic route. The, I, I think that the nice bit about the Finnish educational system is, that was pointed out, that even if you choose the vocational route early on, and you then learn that actually you like reading books, then you can return to the more academic side. So that's the... the nice thing about the Finnish school and vocational school system uh, that it, you don't exclude a more academic career. The bad thing is that we do not have as good uh, uh, apprentice uh, training systems as they do have in Germany. Sizin sorunuzda kısaca alabilir miyim acaba? Cevabı daha doğrusu. So I, I think that very important issue is what are conditions in schools, that it really is the working place where you can do meaningful work. And this freedom and responsibility connection, combining them together, makes teaching profession such a kind of career that you feel that you can do your contribution. It's something which is your own job. You have opportunities to develop that. And in fact, it's very rare that teach change totally their career. If they change move another kind of uh, profession, it very often is linked with education, however, software company or, or publishing company, textbook material or, or education administration. I think that certainly that is depending also economic situation, but in, in Finnish, long-lasting measurements, it has around 10%, maximum 15% who have really changed from, from, uh, from a teaching profession. Çok kısa, müthiş baskı var üstümde. Sonra da hemen son soruya geçeceğim, bir dakika. Evet, bir dakika, bir dakika, bir dakika. Cevap var galiba burada, çok kısa. Yeah, one, one way of keeping teachers in teaching is long summer vacations. <laughs> Evet. <gülüyor> Bir de arkasından şu soruyu sormuyorum, soruyorum. İnanç özgürlüğünü çok ön plana çıkarmış da eğitimde iyi olan herhangi bir ülke var mı? E, vurucu soruyla kapatıyoruz. Vurucu birer cümlelik e, cevaplarınız olabilir mi? Çok önemli. Biz bunu yatıp kalkıp tartışıyoruz. Sizden bunun cevabını istiyoruz ama kısa olmasını da özellikle rica ediyorum. Uh. Finland is a homogeneous country, so uh, basic uh, uh, beliefs are very similar, but there's no emphasis on, on religion in education. It's natural part, people learn about their religion, whether they come from Lutheran background or another background. It's, it's very academic rather than religious approach to, uh, to, to your religion. So I think that the, the way Finland has dealt with it is very pragmatically. You get the basis, but you do not concentrate on the belief side of the system. Right. So I think that in Finnish culture, there is a very long route, the idea that you should be a civilized person. And that means that you have also moral responsibilities and be honest and do your do work very well. And I think that this kind of respect for being good citizen and also being 
educated is value in, in Finnish society. Efendim, Finlandiya nasıl başardı? Çok teşekkür ediyoruz anlattıklarınızdan. Tabii ki bütün hikayeyi anlamamız ve öğrenmemiz çok mümkün değil. Ama bize bir pencere açtınız. Öğrenmek için de önemli bir fırsat oldu bu bizim için. Bundan sonra bizim artık bakacağız sizin deneyimlerinize ve diğer ülke deneyimlerine. Çok çok teşekkür ediyorum e, katıldığınız için e, ve samimi yanıtlarınız için. Ben çok teşekkür ediyorum. Efendim beni bu oturuma davet ettiğiniz için.